memory, tra our memory treasures, a diverse of the day. Again, Romans 15, verse 4, the basis for more encouragement. Everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that we might have hope. That hope that the scriptures gives us. I mentioned earlier that word of scriptures. That word scriptures, if it sounds a little strange in our English tongue, it's because it comes from to us from a different language. It comes from a Latin word, scribere, which means to write, and from that the Latin word scriptus, which means a writing. So when you see the word scriptures or the scriptures, it simply means the writings. The writings of God to us, people. The Greek word in the, the, the New Testament passage was written in. The Greek word is actually that very thing right there. It has that very meaning as well. Literally, the writings. And the reason I can spend a moment to tell you that is because I want you to see what Romans 15 and verse 4 looks like when you apply that knowledge. Everything that was written was written so that through the writings, meaning God's Word, we might have hope. Does anything jump out at you there? Is that repetition? Today's lesson is our God has put everything in writing for us. How important is this fact? Everything God wants to say to us, everything that He wants us to know, is put down for us right here in the Bible, God's Word. Think through all that this means for us. To start thinking that through, let me start with an example. You've maybe heard the advice given to individuals to get it in writing. Maybe the adults can help us with the first question. One of the adults can answer this for us. When or why would someone give that advice to get something in writing? Anybody got an answer they want to offer? Someone's made a promise to you. So you have proof of what someone said. Yes, if you want what someone has said to you, if you want some way to be assured of it, if you, if you want to, to be assured of an offer that's been made to you, it would be good for you to get everything put into writing. Then no one can question the facts later on. And you'll be left with no uncertainty of exactly what what is, is there? It's in writing. Okay, children, let's get you involved here. Let's not leave you out. So, those who are of school age, I see some of those among us. It hasn't been too long since the new school year recently started up. So, I think you should have an example of this to readily come to mind of how important it is to get things in writing sometimes. When you started your classes, did your teacher or teachers Start the, the class, the, the year, by giving you important things that they wanted you to know. Maybe things about the class, or things about how you do things in the classroom. Maybe they have teachers explain things like that to them? Yeah? And so, if they do that, I'm going to guess that the most important things, they didn't just tell you, did they give it to you in some other way? They, what did they give you? Written on a board, or someone up in the classroom, or a handout, right? So that... That then with that important information, you have it in, in writing. Why would it be good to have in writing? If you forget something, what can you do? You can look right there and be reminded. You won't be left with any questions or confusion. What a wonderful thing our God has done for us by putting everything in writing for us. Everything that we need for our soul's well-being is right here in the Bible, God's Word. More important than any, any word, getting in writing any, any words from other people that give us their promises or their guidance is to get in writing the very words of God. 
and to have his promises to us clear. Right here in the writings, we have a God, we have the assurance of who God is. And we have the news of what our God has done to rescue us from sin and to offer us life with him that lasts forever. Our God has put all the answers to life's important questions right here for us. And we're told about everything written here in the Bible. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in Him. The things God has foretold here, the prophecies that He, he made and then fulfilled, gives evidence of this very fact. Every promise that God has made, every word that He has given has been fulfilled. There's not a single word, there will never be a single word of God's word that is not kept. And so bottom line, we have 100% assurance of everything that we find right here in God's writings to us. This is good stuff. Let's dig in a little bit more. Everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that we might have the hope. I, I put the there because in the, the Greek it's certain. It's a, it's a definite thing. There's no ifiness here. That hope that the scriptures give us. As you see those new words highlighted, to teach us and the hope the scriptures give us. I want you to think of a picture. Think of the, of the example of a teacher or a parent, would do this too, who comes near to a, a, a student who, who's there with a, a student or their child, maybe even sits beside their child in order to impart wisdom in order to, to teach and to, to give direction. Now, here again, with that in mind, the, the words of encouragement that are highlighted. Everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that we might have the hope, that hope that the Scriptures give us. Every time we are engaged in listening to God's Word, right here from the Bible, or in reading this Word of God, I want you to think of a picture. I want you to think of the, uh, of the image of Jesus standing right here with you. I want you to think of, of Jesus right beside you. Because that's literally what, what this passage in the Greek has packed into these words. This image that when we are listening to these words, it is our Lord himself who is teaching us. He is imparting to us his wisdom, his truth and his guidance. You see, that's the, the reality packed in here. Everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that we might have the hope. That hope comes from the patience and the encouragement that the scriptures give us. You may be caught that I added the one part of the, the Bible passage that we haven't seen up till this point. And what it does is that those additional words open our eyes to just how much there is for us to receive right here from God's Word. The hope, the patience, and the encouragement that the Scriptures give us. There's so much the Lord gives us as we hear and study His Word. I'm going to just put down a, a brief list to try to help draw this out for us and unpack what's really contained in those, those words, the hope and the patience and the encouragement the scriptures give us. The Lord imparts to us truth. Most importantly, his saving truth. We're told the holy scriptures are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. That means through trusting in what he's done for you. We're told, these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. The Christ means that promised Savior from sin that God foretold. And that by believing in him, you may have life. You'll have life 
then that goes on forever. The Lord imparts truth to us here, his saving truth. The Lord also <laughs> corrects us through this word. The child or the teenager says to their parent, I don't want it. And the Lord corrects them. You are to obey your parents. You are to listen to them because I place them over you for your good, for your care and protection. The teen or the young adult thinks, what's it going to hurt if I join in the gossip? Kind of join in with my friends. and Those other people that aren't here that we're talking about, they'll never know it. It won't hurt them. Besides, maybe I can just stick to true facts about the people, even though they're not flattering things that I'm saying. And the Lord corrects. It does hurt others. And just because you're telling true things doesn't mean it's not still false. False witness that comes from a false heart, false motives that want to put others down in order to make myself look better. We get... We get frustrated and worn because of another long day. And there's still more to do before the day is done. God, have you forgotten me? Who's going who's gonna to take care of me here, God? If I'm so busy thinking about my spouse first and, and my family and serving my, my friends. And the Lord corrects us haven't been forgotten. I will take care of you. I, I will take care of you. Trust me, just as I promised. God uses his word in order to open our eyes to our sins, our failures to trust him, our failures to love the others around us. He calls us to repentance. This is all part of his care for us. Repentance is where we see our sin, we admit it, and we, we come to God trusting that Jesus is the answer. The Lord imparts truth, most importantly a saving truth. He corrects us when we sin. And through this word, he heals and he comforts us. He says to us, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, keeps his promise. And he cleanses us from all sin and all unrighteousness. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His mercies are new every morning to meet the needs every day of us sinners. Great is your faithfulness, the Bible says. He heals us and comforts us and he strengthens us in our faith through that healing news, through that encouragement that he gives us, through his truth. A very practical side of that strengthening of faith is he gives us through that strength the ability to hold up under opposition and difficulty. Earlier when I put up that little part of the passage that's not part of our memory treasure, it had the word, the scriptures give us patience. Another way it's translated sometimes, that word is endurance. It's a word that, that literally means the ability to, to hold up under the trials of life that are thrown at us in this sinful world. It's right here, God's Word, where He gives us the strength to keep our hold on His truth and the hope it gives us. That hope is the certainty of what we have through faith in Jesus. There is no other place to receive forgiveness of sins. There is no other place to have peace that lasts forever. We have it in Jesus. Think how important that certainty is of knowing God's promises are true. Think how important that certainty is to to hold up under trial and difficulty, especially that thought comes to mind on the anniversary of today. 
was 15 years ago to the day when the terrorist attacks of 9-11 happened in our country. It's been 15 years that haven't been completely peaceful since then. Other terror attacks have been committed here on American soil and throughout our world. Senseless acts of, of violence have erupted as well. It's hard to keep track of all the places in the world globally where tensions are occurring between nations or wars are, are happening. And you know the way relations are strained right here in our United States where we live. In the midst of all of this, we know our God hasn't lost control of his world. We know our God has not abandoned his care for us, his people. How do you know that? Because it's all right here in writing for us. He has told us, and he has never lied to us here. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. He says, in this world, yeah, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. You have a peace from me, I give you my peace. It's a kind of peace that the world can't give because it's the peace that lasts beyond this world. How do we have strength to hold on to that? It's all right here. Everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that we might have hope. That hope that the scripture gives us. Amen. <laughs> now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.